Hi there, this is Dr. Embody with Project 7. And Project 7 is actually a lot like Project 6. In that project, we read a file, we read all our information into a list of tuples, and then we had a bunch of functions that we passed those, that list of tuples to, to do some processing on. Uh, this, this project is very similar in that we're gonna build a data structure. We're gonna read the file, build the data structure, it has some functions, that do something with it. What we've done different is uh, a couple of things. One is there are now uh, two different files that we're reading, and we, we have a function reading the data for each file. Uh, and the list itself will be more complex. Uh, in Project 6, we had a list of tuples. In Project 7, we're gonna make a list of list of tuples. Right. And, and so that in, increases the uh, complexity of it. And in fact, here's gonna be a wonderful example of, of uh, a, a case where students who have programmed before, if they haven't embraced the, the sort of the power of Python, uh, the indexing that they're gonna to have to deal with, uh, like, like you might do it in, in say something like Java, uh, will get to be extremely messy. Uh, so uh, let, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. All right, so um, so we're so we're dealing with Project Seven, and uh, like I said, so we so we have an open file, um, and and as before, we do need to have an encoding in here. It's a different one than last time, and then we're going to have two functions that uh, take that file pointer and read it in. So there's one that's doing the uh, uh, the country codes, okay, and and then another that uh, reads a, a travel file, again, using the FP. And in each one of these, you know, we do things like make you sort them, and that makes it a, a little better in terms of, uh, you know, being able to test it in a mirror mirror. As before, we're reading a, a few entries in there, and uh, we're gonna build a tuple. Yeah. But, difference is that this is going to be a, uh, we're gonna take that tuple, we're gonna make a list of that for each year, and then we're going to go on and make a list of those lists. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about more of that in a second. One thing though that we, that you wanna make sure you take, a, take advantage of is that we will always, in this project, have data it, it, you know, starting with 2009 and going up to 2017. So you will always have data for those years. No other years. And, and that will now let us do this indexing of my list based upon the year. And I, again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a moment. So, so I, I think the way to approach this in terms of trying to get uh, to help you with, I'm going to do two things. First of all, um, what does this country code file look like? Well, it looks something like this. It has a country code and the name, like the United States has uh, USA, Belize has BLZ, Canada CAN, and so on. And we're going to read that in. And notice these. There's a slash in there, so that that's separated by slash. So uh, you know, when you read it, um, that's that that's how how you will um, uh, you know you, you will split it based on on the slash as opposed to uh, something else. Okay, and and then what does the travel file look like? Well, we've got a bunch of different sizes. This is the tiny one, and you'll see does have data from 2009 up to 2017. We get to take advantage of that. Uh, we do have to watch out for things like there uh, might be a zero in there. Uh, this time, th this data set doesn't have spaces in it like we did last time, so that's a little bit nice. Uh, we do have some that are uh, floating point values. And uh, you know, so, so there is a, there are a few things there that uh, that we have to watch out for, but you're relatively simple. And then um, the 
the country codes are in here, right? And, and that, that is something that, that we'll be uh, taking advantage of. So getting back to the similarity with uh, Project 6, okay? So in Project 6, we had a list of tuples. And, and so it would look something like this. Uh, we'd have a list, and then we'd have a tuple. I'll, I'll just call them A1, A2, A3. Uh, and then we'd have another tuple. I'll call it B1, B2, B3, and so on. And, and that's, that's what my list of tuples look like. And, and that was, we sort of had this master list that we, we read the file in, we created this list, and then we used this list for the rest of the project. Okay, it's similar here, but in pre, uh, project seven, we're going to take this list of tuples and we're going to make a list of those. So that, that would be, say, list of tuple one, list of tuples two, and so on, so that I have a list of lists. So, so what does this thing actually look like? Well, I'm gonna take a list of tuples and then I'm going to take another list of tuples and just to make them different, I'll use X's. All right, so, so there's a list. So I, I have a list and I will now have a bunch of those lists to make up my larger list. So, so notice um, that I, I have to wrap my list there. So here's a, here's a list and let's see if we can uh, actually get a uh, color here. Let's make it red. So there's my red list. And then here, let's make that my uh, blue list. All right, so, so I have a list of lists. There's the red list, the blue list, and the green list, and the purple list, and, and, and so on down. So I've taken, you know, so we've taken what we had in project six, and now rather than simply a, uh, you know, a, one list of tuples, we have a list of lists of tuples, all right? Okay, so now how do I work with that? Well, let's, let's give this thing a name. Uh, I'll call it my, uh, I'll call it my master list. Uh, there's probably a better, you can probably come up with a better name than that. So, so if I iterate through that master list for x in master list, all right, x being a lousy name, what might that be? Well, it's actually a list of tuples that I'm iterating through. And then if I wanted to go inside of my list of tuples, what do I have in there? I have tuples, so I'll use tup for tuples. For each of those lists of tuples, I can then talk about like tup zero, which might correspond, say, to A1. And I can talk about tup one, which might correspond to A2, and my and a tup two, which corresponds to an A3. And, and in this way, I can I can go, uh, you know, once I have created that list, I can walk, as I walk through the master list, each item that I'm dealing with there is in fact a list of tuples. And so because that's a list of tuples, oops, I forgot the end. 
because that's a list of tuples, I can now go through and look at each tuple, right? That would be there. I'm going through that tuple and then I'm going through that tuple and for each tuple there are three items in there. That's how I will work with this list. How do you build the list? Well, there's, there's uh, we're, we can take advantage of the fact that our files will have, by specification, it will have data for each year up to, uh, I think it was 2017. And so what does that tell us? Well, that means that, uh, you know, so, so the first in my list of, of, of tuples, and I'll, I'll actually go to the, uh, where we read the file, notice in my master list, okay, it's called data list here, it has the co countries for 2009. 2009 is at index zero. 2010 is at index one. And so we can take advantage of that. So, so in, in my, actually, let, let me, let, let me, in, in fact, because that's called data list, let me go back here and call this my data list. And then it will be consistent with what we have in the uh, uh, in the description. So what is my data list made of? Well, my data list has uh, from 2009 and that's index 0. 2010 is index 1, so on. 2011 is index 2 and so on. Well you can you could take you know the, the year that you're dealing with and in a very trivial way, calculate the index. Um, and, and one, th because this is fixed this time, we can do that. And you know exactly how many of these, you know, uh, how big this data list will be because it will have data for 2009, 2010, and, and so on. And in fact, one way you can do this is initialize this to a bunch of empty lists and that may make your life a little bit easier and you know how many of those to do because there's a list for 2009 and a list for 2010 and a list for 2011 all the way up until you get to a list for 2017 right. and and then once you make a uh, uh, a tuple, what are you going to do? You're going to be a a appending onto a list of tuples, right? Because each country is a uh, is is a tuple here, and so this index now will be a function of the year that we're dealing with. So, in this picture, notice how. Um, pick a different color here. Notice how when I say data list of a particular value, what is this thing here? That is a list of tuples. All right, and so and what do we do? We append tuples onto my list of tuples. Okay, so so in this, we are, um, we are building a, um, uh, oops. we are in fact building this kind of uh, data structure. Get my colors here. Let's go with the green, all right. We're building this kind of data structure, all right. A list which is a list of tuples, a list of tuples, and so on. Uh, so that's the organization. Once you build this, then uh, then you have to work with it, and 
uh, um, you know, the, this this outline right here shows you a way to um, access the individual tuples in there. And so with the rest of this project, we take my data list and we do things with it. So like we, uh, but we, we keep passing those around, although in this particular one, so, so the data list is, is my whole master list. This is a list for a country, all right? Um, and and so, so we got to slice things out of here. And, and here is a uh, uh, just for a year. Uh, and then finally, uh, in, in addition to, you know, so we have the structure, you know, we got a main with a few options that you have to choose. Um, that's, that's sort of a familiar thing. Uh, what we are doing is we're going to, we provide you with plotting functions. And what these functions do is get the data set for the plot. So like, for example, if you're going to plot X's versus Y's, it's nice to have a list of X values and a list of Y values. And so we prepared these. And, and then, uh, and, and so if you prepare these right, you know, if, if these tests pass, and you get the uh, parameters right, your your plots will just work, and and the same thing here. So we so we have you you have two types of plots. You got a bar plot and a line plot. And we don't worry about those here. We just got to get the data set so that, that then it will work in our um, uh, in our uh, plotting functions. And notice that unlike before, those are not lists of tuples. They're actually simpler. This could be a list of values. And that's a pretty common thing when you do a line plot because you have, have a list of X values, a list of Y values, and go ahead and plot it. Whew. Okay. Hopefully that's enough to uh, get you started. Good luck.